are very honored to welcome the advisor of President Emmanuel Macron, filmmaker, journalist, and columnist Liz Gomez to share her keynote with us. Please give a huge applause to Liz Gomez. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's a little bit of pressure. <laughs> So, thank you so much. Um, my name is Liz Gomez, and today I choose the title of producer because I'm in total denial uh, for being a one-woman army all by myself. So, producer, I think, is the right word for me. So, all I can tell is, I started as a journalist, I ended up in meetings in reduced committee with the French president, Emmanuel Macron, on our way to Burkina Faso in 2017. So. If I could tell you the whole story, you would never believe it, but we have only 20 minutes. But I guess ADC's title is correct. Ideas create reality. All you need is a little bit of luck, maybe a lot, let's be honest, a dose of confidence, and always try to be steady on your feet, even when your plan is bumping into obstacles. So my dream has always been to become a storyteller. I first choose TV, because you know what they say, a picture worth a thousand words. And in my case, I wanted to, people to see the continent I'm originated from differently. I wanted to shift mentalities about Africa to get rid of that biased filter, which is called the Global North Universalism. <laughs> So yes, we went with my small team and shot two short documentary series um, targeting the youth because I'm only betting on them to create that very necessary shift. When we did the first series, Africa Riding, it took us two years to pitch and sell the idea to a TV channel in France. And you have to know something about me, I'm very, very persistent. The more you are dismissing my ID, the more I'll prove you you're wrong. So as I said, I stood steady on my feet and kept on working until um, RTTV said yes. Long story short, 16, uh, 16 million views on their YouTube channel, still an unbreakable record for them since 2019. So let's watch a short excerpt of what it was, African scene through the eyes of the insiders. Did I just say? Africa seen through the eyes of the insiders. So this led me to Elysee Palace to join the Presidential Council for Africa. At first, I wasn't sure to be in the right place. But then quickly, I just reminded myself, you know what, I'm French, and who refused to speak with the president? I had to shoot my shot, and I did it for the better. So we, along with my colleagues, produced notes, went on the ground, collecting the words on the street. We went to Addis, to Nairobi, Accra, Dakar, and so many more cities. We organized and produced events. Um, realized different projects on public health, environmental issues uh, around the Great Green Wall, and the ultimate one was to organize something never did before in France. So he challenged us with this proposition, he submitted, uh, we submitted him. And I forgot to say, I will say he, him, but you know who I'm refer referencing to, right? So we launched the organization of this huge event called Season Africa 2020 to introduce the best of innovation coming from the continent in all fields of human creation, from gastronomy to art, to science, philosophy, sports, everything. And let me tell you, it was a challenge on so many levels. Very short time to mobilize the whole country to 
to shift the mindset in our organizational team and the French administration, shift the mindset of the average French person, and the worst thing we could face, a pandemic right before the opening. But I mentioned obstacle in my forward right. Um, you, can struggle, you can't struggle more than trying to organize an event during the COVID, and ADC, you know what I mean. So, 4 million visitors in 210 cities, more than 1,500 projects, and I think we created bonds between the thousands of organizations in France and in Africa who participated and worked together for this unprecedented event. And we stayed faithful to our first ID until the very last moment, which was the closing dinner at Elysee in last September. So, I don't know if I realize it to, until today, but we brought a Donfo. I don't know if you know what a Donfo is, but a Donfo is a very popular transportation service in Lagos. Yeah, we did it in the middle of the entrance of the courtyard of Elysee. Not to mention that we just turned the whole place into a Lagos vibe in sound and images, thanks to the work of um, the Nigerian artist Emeka Ogbo. So for me, this was the materialization of a crazy idea we had in 2017 with the Presidential Council, and it turned into reality thanks to the brain who worked on it. So, yes, for us, for me, this is exactly what I'm working for, just trying to shift some of the things in the French administration because it's really not easy to work and we have a, a history that is really difficult and sometimes they don't want to acknowledge it. So my, my role is to make them realize that, you know what, history is in the making and you have to be part of it. So, but sometimes reality takes you back on solid ground and lockdown just made me realize I wanted to leave a mark or something for that history I'm telling you since about 10 minutes, and I needed to experience something by myself without any help or support from the government. So, um, I wanted my idea to be as faithful as I wanted without any political filters, so I started off to magazines. So you can see the first one is on Accra, that I have here, the second one on Kinshasa, and we are working on the third one on Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. So, yeah, this magazine, how can I say that? Um, it's the magazine I wanted to read, I would have loved to read when I was 25. Yeah, I'm not 30 years old, I'm sorry. I'm more than half of a century than in my 20s, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I wanted to read that book, when, uh, that kind of magazine, when I was 25, because I was born and raised in France, and I shared two cultures. But when I was younger, I thought that I had to be only French. And when I grew up, I just realized that the two can coexist together. The two can, are just me, so I have to deal with it. But the thing is, I grew up with biased image from the media, from the press, and that's why I created Of Two. Uh, and in a way, it's about shifting mentalities, again, by depicting uh, urban city centers in Africa in a way Lonely Planet would never. So it's 100% powered by a team of African women, 100 produced by a team of young African creatives who are all paid for their work, 100% funded by my pocket. Because visibility <laughs> never paid the bills, plus we need to start respecting that continent. Nothing is for free, so is the workforce of that huge continent. So let's breathe out a little bit and watch the teaser of our Kinshasa issue. If it's working. So, yes. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> So, 
This is Kinshasa, and sometimes it can, this city can be hard to understand at some point. Sometimes it's graphic, and sometimes it's just an amazing piece of artistic genius. But it's certainly not only about defect and flaws, and that's what we wanted to show in this magazine. So, for me, of two is like the materialization of all the ideas I have growing up. I really wanted, as I told you, to leave a mark. I really wanted to showcase something new, something different, to tell all the medias that you don't have to send always like correspondents to Africa to talk about those topics. You have journalists there, they can do the work. We have people who are doing great videos, taking great photographs, but you just have to give a chance. You just have to trust the people, and in that case, you will be able to treat uh, an information we, um, which will not be biased. So for me, yeah, this is the, um, the main thing I'm working on. I'm putting all my energy on, uh, into it, all my money into it, because I know that at some point it will leave its mark. And before I leave the stage, I wanted to leave you with something more poetical and make a close-up on the most beautiful idea I've ever had in my life. It's also the most personal project I've ever conceived. I co-wrote a solo performance for someone really dear to me, my cousin Antoinette. And it was about our image, the way we see ourselves as French black girls, how we made peace with stigmas, negative perception to create two successful, confident and mind-free adults. And I'm giving a shout out to Leticia Key because in a way she inspired us to to do, that, uh, to do that work. So it was on Nina Simone's repertoire, and thanks to this one-hour-long piece, we had the chance to tour the world and made a stop in North Carolina, where Nina Simone was born, and to dance on the stage of the Apollo Theater in Harlem. I can't even put words on what we felt those uh, two nights of representation, but trust me, it definitely made us stronger and helped us realize that the key is to have faith in our dreams and never stop chasing. This is Little Sim's words for those who knows, not mine. So thank you for listening to me. And you have one thing to remember. I'm just putting a small hint of what it was. It was the rehearsals. Because we don't know how beauty, we don't know our force and strength. And I'm working on it like on uh, daily basis, and yeah, thank you for listening to me. And if you have one thing to remember about me and about my work, is this quote written on screen from Miriam Makeba, and it drives every ideas I'm trying to create when it comes to the African continent. So thank you, thanks ADC for allowing me to express myself on this stage. Thank you. It's kind of stressful, to be really honest. <laughs> what would you say is the next step, the biggest change you would like to see in, let's say, the next two, three years? The next change in the next two, three years, if it comes, if it's about the media, I really want like Global North Media Organization to hire more people from the Global South, because the information cannot only be in the north, and you cannot just dismiss all of the material we have in the global south. I'm not talking only about Africa, I'm talking about South America, I'm talking about South Asia too. We have to tell our own stories, we have to create our own platforms. That's what, what Leticia is doing, and that's what I'm trying to do with the magazine. I'm trying to, in a way, yeah, drive the content, drive the information, being able to be who I want to be mm -hmm. and to tell what I really want to tell about the reality. And I, today, I can't stand anymore like seeing news about... The other day, it was a, a, an article in Le Monde, they were talking about the fact that Kinshasa was uh, going to the East African... Um, uh, Congo was going to the East African com community, mm -hmm. and they just put a picture of uh, children soldiers. I was like... What is the relationship between mm -hmm. the two? So we have to shift that. And if they don't put people into their newsroom who are directed, linked to those stories, we will for sure have problems for the years to come. So basically also what Orini said, that you have the conversation with the people who are 
who are living and breathing whatever you want to talk about. Exactly. Okay. Thank you so much Thank for you being so much. here today. Thank you so much.